membrane technology is a little bit different than a lot of the presentations we have here mostly because you're not directly in the fuel cell sector. Uh, could we open up by just telling me a little bit about Fumatec as a company and what you do and how you ended up here? Sure, thanks. Yeah, welcome everybody. Um, yeah, I'm representing a company, Fumatech, BWT, GmbH, which is a producer of membranes and separators for a lot of different applications. So we very much focus on the material level of, of, of our business. Um, and we are doing the membrane only for water treatment in our core business. And we're also doing membranes for fuel cell, for flow batteries, for electrolyzers, and for CO2 reduction. Um, all that business we are doing in an environment of a big water treatment group. So the mission of, the, of, our, of our group of companies uh, is not so much dedicated to fuel cell and energy application, but it's very much into water. Okay, so you're really more of a water membrane expert and uh, dabbling and getting a little bit into the fuel cell side. Um, so. Maybe this is a bit of an ignorant question, but how different are the fuel cells that, or sorry, not the fuel cells, how different are the membranes needed between those two technologies? Like how well equipped were you already to do to produce these different types of membranes? Yeah, thanks. Well, um, we are already a producer of, of membranes on a very large size and scale. So uh, we are uh, experienced to make not only square meters and not 10,000s of square meters, uh, we are f way above the 100,000 square meter level and with some, some membranes in the water treatment field, we are even exceeding the 1 million square meter per year. Uh, now the question is, why is a company like Fumatech still interested in new applications in the field of energy applications? Um, we have uh, a moderate growth in water treatment on one hand side and we see a lot of opp opportunities for our materials in energy applications and looking 20 years back, we even thought we can use exactly the same materials uh, and the same membranes in, in all the different uh, applications like water treatment and fuel cell. This turned out to be completely wrong. We were just ignorant, but that was helpful. If we would not be ignorant, I would not sit here. So certainly we would never begin the business. But we started in, in, in the 90s already uh, to develop proper membranes for fuel cells and for energy applications because we really believe that we should not contribute only into better drinking water. We should also contribute to lower CO2 emissions. And what is better than to work on fuel cell? All right, perfect. So um, now we know that the membranes are in fact different between the water treatment and the fuel cell stuff. I guess maybe let's talk a little bit more about the membranes with respect to fuel cell applications. Um, what are they mostly made out of? Well, <clears throat> most of the membranes, and well, maybe go one step back. When we started in the 90s, uh, we were specialists in hydrocarbon membranes. Um, and we developed and we tried to use our hydrocarbon water treatment membranes to manufacture low cost uh, uh, fuel cell membranes. Today, the business is very simple. Uh, we are working on fluorinated materials, so all the membranes we are using for our uh, both PEM electrolyzer markets and for our PEM fuel cell market are based on uh, different fluorinated polymers. Um, the access to those polymers were get, was getting much, much better over the last 20 years. Um, late 90s, we were in a situation that we had to produce the materials by ourselves. Today, we are approached by a lot of suppliers which offer their materials, and so we are completely free uh, to manufacture the best fuel cell membrane out of the best polymer available on the market. And this is uh, fluorinated either long side chain or short side chain PFSA material. Okay, great. Um, so you have the ability, you were saying, to mass produce your membranes, which is fantastic. But one of the big challenges that a lot of fuel cell companies have is that they don't have the ability to mass produce. Is it possible for you guys to be able to um, sort of join together with some of these companies so that you can try to help, help them be able to produce more and then get more of these uh, cost advantages with respect to mass production? Um, so you guys can do it. Where's the holdup for them, do you know? 
yeah, I think the, um, the availability of material is not the bottleneck at the moment. Uh, the bottleneck is the availability of real products, um, the availability of, of vehicles, the availability of stationary fuel cell systems. Uh, I think on the material side, uh, in Europe, you have a fantastic uh, range of products for all components of a fuel cell system. So we really suffer from, uh, from, from turnkey systems, products, vehicles. Uh, and, and that is why we also decided uh, not only to look into the material R&D and into the production, we also would like to visualize the whole technology. So we thought, okay, if there are no systems on the market, there is a reason for that. And uh, can we show, in a sense, as a membrane producer, which is rather difficult, can we show and demonstrate fuel cell applications? Uh, and here we have a very great commitment from uh, our board of directors um, to do much more than just uh, to provide raw materials to our customers. Okay, um, can you give an example of a way that you've really shown shown what fuel cells can do and more specifically what your membranes can do for fuel cells? Well, the first thing is uh, uh, for us, um, we would like to, especially in the time now, everybody's discussing about battery electric mobility. Uh, and I think especially now it's extremely important that you show fuel cell vehicle to the end user. Uh, and there is not so much we can do. We can just show maybe handmade products or uh, tailored products uh, to, to, to the public, uh, and we can show uh, fuel cell vehicles. And here we decided to do two routes, separately and independently. So one action you can see uh, at our booth. So we yeah, the bright pink car. The bright pink car, yes. It's excellent. So, so our group of companies we are already sponsoring a lot of race series. Uh, with, with the pink color, so we are sponsoring Formula One and we are sponsoring other, other race series. Uh, and so we decided we should also sponsor some activity which is in the field of fuel cell. And we found a, a fantastic team in the Technical University in Delft, uh, really committed, 100% committed students, uh, which have, uh, let's say, the ambition. Uh, to make a fuel cell vehicle in a year or more. I mean, some students are sitting here, and, and I know they work day and night uh, to make this dream real. Uh, and for us, it's just the motivation. A pink fuel cell car, this is visible. So people see it. Uh, right, so a huge issue with the fuel cell cars in general is that they're not so easy for the end user to get to, partially because they don't know about them or they haven't seen them or they're prohibitively expensive. So I think it's fantastic that you guys have something that's so, uh, so eye-catching for people to look at uh, and take a look. So if you haven't checked out the pink car yet, head over to booth B79. Uh, and I'm sure that uh, the people from TU Delft will be happy to, happy to give you a little bit of a tour of that car. Um, so aside from that, uh, we were talking a little bit about back to your membrane stuff. Uh, who are you trying to work with for your membranes? Are you trying to be, what sort of sectors are you trying to be into? And are you trying to go more directly to end users or more to a centralized section? Mm -hmm. So we have a strategy which says membrane only, first of all. So uh, our typical customer is depending on the final application. Uh, we cover applications from CO2 reduction to electrolyzer to the fuel cell and also into flow battery. And so our customers are different companies. So when it is coming to flow batteries, which is an application for large size energy storage, we are directly selling to stack manufacturers. And uh, Fumatech is the leading company in Europe uh, supplying membranes to most of the flow battery companies in Europe. Uh, we are supplying to flow battery companies in Korea. I think even in Korea we have a, a dominating position. Uh, we sell into China, into the US and into, um, and into Japan. And in all cases it's going directly to the system companies, to the stack manufacturers. Very different is the situation when we are looking into the fuel cell business. Our typical customer is either the manufacturer of a MEA, of a membrane electrode assembly. So we are selling to the company which coat the membrane with catalyst. Um, 
and this is true for both fuel cell and, and electrolyzer, or we are in some rare cases selling to an OEM, uh, and the OEM is doing both the catalyst coating and the stack manufacturing. Uh, the number of uh, companies which is doing the whole integration is decreasing, which is good for me, uh, because it means we are getting closer to the market. The more you come to a situation that you have a real supply chain, what I'm used to have in water treatment, uh, I would never sell to an engineering company which is making a system. I will always sell to the stack company. A clear supply chain for me is a good sign that the market is growing. And uh, if we are coming to a position that uh, we have a supply chain in fuel cell, I think this will help all of us to get costs down. Okay, fantastic. Um, okay, so we talked a little bit about what you have done in the past. Could you make any comments on where you'd like to go in the future? Do you have any upcoming uh, products that you're working, or projects, sorry, that you're working on? Uh, anything exciting on, on the horizon for Fumatec? Yeah. I mean, at the moment, what is driving all the material companies in Europe is uh, we have materials ready to the market, but we do not have a market just in front of our door. So I think a lot of companies on a system level, they are not yet committed as we would love to see it, in a sense that the OEMs uh, commit themselves to go very deeply and open into fuel cell systems. Sure, they do. For all material suppliers, we have we think it's a little bit too slow. Uh, all of the market is, is going, going in China and in Japan and in Korea. This is the, the area where all the material suppliers in Europe are doing most of their business. Um, in Europe, we talk always about this chicken and egg problem. So the car companies, they, there are no filling stations. Uh, the companies which make a filling station, they say, okay, there are no vehicles. Uh, just for us, it's a very small level, and it's only a, a really tiny, small contribution to that chicken and egg problem. In our last board meeting, we decided we will have filling stations within BWT group of companies. So we will make one hydrogen filling station in our headquarter in Austria. We will do the next filling station near Heidelberg, and we will do the third filling station in front of Fumatech. Uh, and we have a clear plan. We purchase fuel cell vehicles, whatever we can get. It's not so much, but there's, there are products on the market coming from Asia. We will purchase these vehicles, and our sales and service people, they go in fuel cell vehicles to their customer. So this is the thing. It's all to visualize uh, and also to demonstrate the technology. Yeah, that's such a great message to be sending, that even though it's not directly within your wheelhouse and there is this cir uh, circular problem, you guys have decided to just go bilaterally and make the fuel cell fueling stations yourself, as well as uh, purchasing those fuel cell cars and sending out all your techs there. So that's, that's a fantastic gesture mm -hmm. to, be, uh, to be doing. Um, how did you first get into the fuel cell area, if you don't mind me asking? So you, because you are traditionally just a, a water guy, right? <clears throat> well, I'm the founder of Fumatech, uh, yeah. and I started the company in 1992. Um, and I was working in fuel cells for already six years. Um, and the investor in Fumatech, he said, hey, Bernd, on your document, on your finance plan, I cannot see anything from your former work on fuel cell. So I simply said, okay, 1992, I need products where I can survive, where I can pay salaries. So let's focus on water treatment first, but let's do R&D on fuel cells all the time. So we are constantly working from the very first day on fuel cell membrane uh, and other separators, uh, sure. But to pay the salary for the past 25 years, uh, we were more or less in a situation that we had to focus on water treatment as well. Okay, fantastic. Um, so at this point, I'd like to open, uh, open it up to the floor if anyone has any questions. Um, for a baron, that'd be fantastic. Um, anything you might want to know about membrane technology? <laughs> um, and if there are no questions at this moment, uh, will oh. Olaf Jensen, DTU Energy. I'd like to ask to your interest in membranes for alkaline electrolysis. Yes. Um, 
So, so in the hydrogen generation, we are active in both areas. So uh, we are doing membranes for uh, the, well, not, I should not say the traditional. I, we do membranes for the PEM electrolyzer, but we do membranes for the alkaline electrolyzer as well. And we see that uh, at the moment, especially the alkaline electrolysis is really doing very big steps to higher, to higher current density. Uh, so which means uh, alkaline electrolysis is really uh, competing uh, PEM electrolysis in terms of uh, current density. That means also in terms of hydrogen generation per square meter. Um, our focus is on the so-called pressurized alkaline, uh, which is less sensitive to pressure fluctuations. So we have a real ion exchange membrane for both KOA-doped alkaline electrolyzers and water-based alkaline. So electrolyzers with an ion exchange membrane. Thank you. All right, any, anyone else out there? Nope, all right, so uh, if you do come up with any sort of questions that you wanna ask, you can head on over to booth B79. Will you be here all week? Oh yes, Dale. I'll be there until Wednesday. I'm happy to receive your questions. Th there until Wednesday is not there all week. Uh, I'm not here all week, but there are a lot of specialists, or let's say end of the week, the real specialists are coming. <laughs> all right, so make sure you head over to there uh, before Wednesday if you want to yep. talk to about it in person. Yep. Uh, so thank you so much for talking with me today, sure. and I hope you continue to have a good time at the fair. Definitely. Thanks, Helen.